Hi everybody, December 7, 2018, I said two days ago that they would have to blow this storm up. We saw nothing on radar in all of these states. We did see all of the chemtrailing going on. And I said that we can see that on satellites, the all of the cloud being made, being manufactured through the geoengineering. Oh man, yeah, and I said then they can just hit it with a laser. They could hit it with uh, electromagnetic frequencies to blow it up, and they did. And I'm very upset at myself because I was on IntelliPass last night, and there were in Texas uh, just broken pieces of precipitation, light precipitation, as well as Los Angeles. But CNN was saying that this storm, or it was NBC, I'm sorry, this storm was coming from California. This storm coming from Southern California was going to be reaching into the Carolinas. Are you kidding me? That in itself should beg questions in everybody's minds because we never had winter storms coming out of LA reaching across to the Carolinas. But now we do. Now we do. They blew it up and it's looking just like they forecasted. You know, I got a comment earlier from somebody who told me to calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Those comments come from comfortable people. They don't come from those who have experienced the loss of everything. They don't come from people who are stressed out because they don't have the resources to protect themselves, to be comfortable in these quote unquote disasters. And they sure as hell do not come from all of those who have lost loved ones in the fire. It was under the fire, one of my fire videos. Yeah, calm down. Calm down when we've had tens of thousands of people who lost their home in 24 hours. Calm down. Well, I can't calm down. This is highly manipulated, as you can see. All of the sawtooth fraying at the edges of the precipitation, the straight lines the extremely low frequencies, as well as the microwaves, the extremely low frequencies coming from uh, extremely low frequency transmitter sites or Gwen Towers that litter our interstates, and the microwave frequencies coming from cell phone towers. Isn't this great? Another manufactured storm. So uh, I'm going to read some of that CNN article it, it, the forecasting, wow, it sure has changed. But this entire thing is littered with frequency signatures. You know, even just these small little pieces of uh, storms, you can see, here we go, extremely low frequencies. And this is in New Mexico. I Look, you know, when you know that there are elderly, well, tenants of mine who are really stressed out with the loss of power, when you yourself, you no longer have the means, the resources, or the energy to even put in to protecting yourself as best you can. Yeah. This is not fun to live. And then you face all of the Americans who just don't give a shit. And it pisses you off. And when you know that this is all manufactured, and all one needs to do 
is just do a little bit of research and they won't do it. No, they're going to hang on to global warming, climate change, or it's just Mother Nature. And you know that they are using these storms as a weapon. And you, you know that, oh, you can get the forecasting, you can get, you know, the satellite images, you can get the radar on all of these storms. And it may not look bad, but they can hit you and it will be really bad. You know it because you just don't know what is going to be manifesting. Yeah, this is very upsetting. So, they did it. They blew it up. You know, last night, all no precipitation at all, at all, anywhere, except for Houston with a few uh, broken patches of green right here. I come on this morning. Boom. There you go. And the only thing that I could find was this picture, um, which closely resembled what I was looking at, except, and this is the, in, this is an IntelliCast shot. You know what? Hang on. I was going to look for some past images, but you know what? I'm not even going to take the time because it's not necessary. It's just, you're either going to believe me or you're not. Um, but they did it. Again, I'm going to recommend Mike Morales, who is uh, on these storms. Look at all of the chemtrailing that he shows in Tennessee, um, Kentucky, and you can go to Worldview. This, this is December 6. Look at all of the chemtrailing that was taking place yesterday for this storm so they can create, create the artificial clouds. And then they can use the microwaves, which you can see the signatures right in here, all of these little ripples to expand what they're laying down. Or look, they don't even have to lay down any aerosols. The ionization of our atmosphere, atmosphere I'm sorry, um, the negative ions can be hit with electricity and voila, you can see clouds that just suddenly appear. They can grow these clouds, make them huge, but all of what you see here, what you see here, all of the rippling, these are microwaves that you're looking at. And all of the lines are the aerosols sprayed into our atmosphere. This entire thing is rife with frequencies another generated storm. It should piss all of you off, even those of you who are not in this storm, because you know what? The suffering that is taking place in our country, that too has a ripple effect. It creates a really bad energy for all of us. Look at all of these frequencies. This is heading up north. which is important for all of you up north because they've been saying that this this um, storm is going to be coming through it will reach up to maybe Virginia and then go out into the Atlantic or maybe not that's how they forecast and you'll see evidence of how they forecast in one second but look at this alright so they're spraying this to create a storm 
All of this goes into the atmosphere. That's called our air that we breathe. Toxic heavy metals, heavy uh, metal particulates, aluminum, barium, strontium, lithium, whatever the hell they're laying down in our atmosphere. But we're breathing this. Your children are breathing all of this. Children. The increase in cancers, in asthma, in allergies, in children, it ha it's just been exponential. So, you know, yes, you're not going to see me calm down. You know, I'm from the Northeast. I'm from New York, lived in Massachusetts. Nor'easters, the loss of power, it was no problem. In fact, sometimes it was fun. You get together with friends, you light the candles, you have dinner together. You, you know, I loved the snow. I loved. I'm not saying this for me. I am saying it for all of the people who really are struggling. When you get older, it's harder. But there's an awful lot of people who are alone. They don't have the resources to handle this. Those who are comfortable, you guys have your families. You've got, you know, you, you, you have... So today we have a completely white sky, completely white. Look at all of this crap going through our atmosphere. You can still see all of the signatures. This is Tennessee, Kentucky up here. You can see the frequencies. Um, and look at all of this. All of this man-made with toxic chemicals and metals. All right, CNN, you want to hear this? This is incredible snow to blanket the South this weekend in major winter storm. And, oh great, all of my highlighting came off. Something is also going on with my computer that I do not understand. All right. How far south freezing air will reach remains an open question, making it difficult to precisely forecast ice and snow accumulation. Really? Well, you used to be able to. What's different today? What's different today is that all of this is manufactured. Uh... Six million people in northern Texas and Oklahoma and parts of Arkansas and Missouri are on storm watches, flash flooding watches. Um, uh, was it Georgia that declared a state of emergency two days ago when nothing was happening? Or was it Oklahoma? Oklahoma, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Now we just, every state declares a state of emergency for any kind of storm way before it actually hits. All of these new ways of doing things should beg questions in everybody's minds. What the hell is going on? Now, as the storm develops, forecast models will more accurately predict the freezing line and thus the type of precipitation uh, places will experience. And here is what CNN meteorologists expect. Where and when. And you read this and it's may and it's could or right now. Uh, some models predict this, but others, well, you might get this. 
It's insane. Now, Oklahoma, you got ice, you got snow. Texas, you got ice, you got snow. Uh, more than 13 million people are under a flood or flash flood watch. In eastern Texas cities, San Antonio, Houston, you could see flash flooding tonight. Uh, rainfall could total three to six inches and in isolated spots could see as much as 10. Wow! So isolated areas will get really intense rain this is not what we ever lived. Most of Arkansas won't feel the precipitation, but then later on it says, well, you could feel the precipitation. Um, I'm going to pause you just to highlight some of this. <laughs> I told you strange things are happening. Right when I said that, all of my highlighting came back. Oh, okay, well... Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas region could see four to five inches of rain. Flash flooding possible. Right now, Little Rock looks like it will pick up a maximum one inch with little or no accumulation possible. Uh, precipitation begins to creep into the region early Saturday morning with rain in Georgia and some light wintry precipitation in the mountains. From there, things can get interesting. Things will get interesting. The situation will begin to pick up Saturday afternoon with large accumulation Sunday into early morning. A significant amount of snow across the mountains of North Carolina and South Carolina and Northeast Georgia. It's expected. Oh, but it's not certain. Wow. Okay. Uh, if warmer air mixes in, it could lessen the amount of snow. It all depends on a regional <clears throat> weather phenomenon called cold air damming. All these new um, terms coming out of these meteorologists. Oh, okay. Now we have uh, this regional weather phenomenon called cold air damming when cold air is forced from the northeast and pushes against the Appalachians. Th this shallow layer of cold air allows for freezing temperatures to remain near the surface as warmer, moist air moves over it. If the air column stays cold enough near the surface and extends high enough into the atmosphere, moisture will fall as snow. Right now, most forecast models show this lasting through the weekend and into early morning. Early snow estimates range from one foot to almost two feet across the mountains and foothills west of Interstate 85. Interesting that the forecasting uh, always includes an interstate where we have Gwen Towers all over the country, right up against the interstates. So this means portions of North Carolina could see record snowfall. This could be a once-in-a-generation event for areas that experience mostly snow and ice. There is even the possibility on Sunday afternoon for blizzard conditions in the high elevations of the Appalachians and the cities most impacted, if it actually does occur, is Asheville, Greensboro, Raleigh, and Charlotte. The amount of snow in areas east of I-85 largely depends on how established the cold air damming also called the wedge, becomes. Are you getting in this forecast that they have no clue and they're just guessing all over the place, but they're throwing in all of these uh, terms and, and explaining to you now. Now they explain in detail what, uh, what could happen and why it might happen. Whether it happens is, well, whether they are successful with their manufacturing of this storm. But uh, it, it even gets, like, weirder, this. Okay, we will hold off on getting too cute 
with any snow amounts at this time, given the degree of uncertainty and how the varying precipitation types types would impact accumulations. We're going to hold off getting too cute with any snow amounts. Oh my god. Most models keep the winter precipitation tucked into the Carolinas. There is one model that shows the possibility of freezing rain reaching down the I-85 corridor to impact Atlanta on Sunday night into Monday. So which way is this storm going? Okay, so it's going to be, it, it, it's, well, you see, the storm is pretty big. It's going to absolutely get bigger. They will blow this thing up. Um, but CNN just said that after it has impacted North Carolina, South Carolina, then it could go back down and affect Atlanta, Georgia. Really? Okay. Well, let's... Uh, <laughs> this, this, see it went off. Goes back on. I'm not doing a thing. All right. Um, so, the freezing rain may reach down the I-85 corridor to impact Atlanta on Sunday night into Monday. But listen to this. Storm moves out to see Monday. Models showed Thursday. However, it could also turn and climb up the East Coast, bringing heavy snow to major metro areas. Wow. Okay. So, a long article that tells you nothing. It tells you CNN is guessing. And they're covering their bases on everything because now they can't even forecast a day or two ahead. This is where we have gotten. And this storm was forecasted to go out into the Atlantic, but now they're saying, but it could also just kind of go right on up the East Coast. Really. And nobody is questioning any of this crap. I, I'm sure maybe in a day or two, we could see that the storm has decided to go back to L.A. Where this storm originated, this is what we're supposed to believe. We saw absolute, and I posted a video showing, and this was about two days ago, no, nothing on radar. Absolutely nothing on radar uh and if I'm remembering correctly, there was hardly any precipitation in Texas. You did see a storm in L.A. So we're supposed to believe that that storm in L.A. that's now gone, somehow, well, it died out over Arizona and New Mexico, but then blew up again in Texas and now has exploded to reach into South Carolina. That's what we're supposed to believe. The idiocy that is taking place in our country is maddening. It's maddening. Calm down. That works for you who are comfortable. Sorry. But this idiocy is so terrifically dangerous and it leaves people having to suffer consequences that once you experience them you get to know what it feels like what you're up against and it's not fun and that is the great understatement of the day. It's not fun.
I hope to God that all of you are okay. Who knows what's going to happen? That That's the maddening part about this. We don't know. You now it was drizzling rain. It's not that cold right now, but the temperatures, the swing in our temperatures is pretty, um, oh, well, it can swing 50 degrees. It can swing 40 degrees, 30 degrees in a day. But when man is controlling the weather, that's what happens. So I hope everybody in the states mentioned that could get badly impacted that you're safe, that we don't have power outages. Living this repeatedly, it wears on you. I can't imagine what all of those in California who have been evacuated over and over and over again are experiencing. It's not just a matter of inconvenience. It affects you in a way that leaves you feeling an insecurity about life itself. All links.